everyone, welcome back. Today, we're going to be talking a little bit about the Slam update and the hammers that we have available. Why hammers? Because they got the biggest Slam multiplier in the entire game, of course, as well as the largest Slam radius at default 9 meters range, but not all hammers are made equal. And also, because it's been the last one I haven't really covered, we're going to be taking a look at the Sempotis. You might have already seen or heard about this because Nightmare has covered it recently, but I'm sure you didn't know it can do this. You might think this is not that surprising. However, what if I told you I just killed all of those level 180 corrupted heavy gunners with just three mods? Now, this is something that only this hammer in particular can do, and there's a very specific reason for that. Let's get into the main hammers that I've been looking at recently as of late. The main ones are Archetitron, the Magistarn and its Sancti variant with the Incarnon. We have Sempotes, and, well, of course, Wolf Sludge. But that's its own thing. You've seen the Wolf Sledge video made if, a couple of months ago. It's basically about throwing. What I would say right now is the Archetitron and the Sancti are tied at the top, depending on your use case. And then this hammer, this new one that we're looking at today, is the Wild Card one. It is simultaneously significantly better and also significantly worse than the Magistar and Titron at the same time. And the reason for it is this. You probably saw on my Magistar Slam build where when I go around slamming enemies, I would get juicy red crits. Hooray, I'm sure you guys love that. But that its main draw was it had an 18 meter slam radius at all times. And you will probably also note if you tried playing around with them that slam builds are very clunky because of the amount of time it takes to do slam move on to the next group of enemies. So you want to make the best out of every single slam, which is the reason why the Magistar works so well, because it has built in 18 meter slam radius, no matter what you do, no Good matter morning what form it's in no matter how much combo you have. The Titron on the other hand only has 9 meter slam radius compared to the Magistar's 18. It gains 1 meter, no 2 meters now post changes per capacitor stack going up to plus 10 for 19. But what this means is every other slam has reduced range and less damage. But it does have force proc electric because they did finally fix that in the most recent hotfix for those that are unaware or were unsure of. Here, I'm going to go slam in the middle of all of these enemies. And if I do actually have force proc electric, then I should get 20 plus procs on the enemies because it will reflect all of the influence procs. And as you can see, uh, we're at 25 procs. So it does actually work on every slam again. That's the one benefit that this one has over Magistar is you get the Force Brox. However, Magistar easily reaches 100% status and has a massive slam radius no matter what. So while Titron can Force Proc Electric, you alternate between smaller slam, which means you have to make sure enemies are actually within your slam radius to build stacks, which they will die once you do, to being able to now slam from much further away and still kill them because of capacitor mechanics. The Magistar is just big red crits all around no matter what, but is less damage than the Capacitor mechanic on Titron when it's stacked. Now, it is a big nerf. If you were wondering, um, the Capacitor change is equivalent to about a 99 to 99.5% damage nerf on Titron. Base path, this doesn't matter because it meant you went from hundreds of millions to damage cap down to stay still millions of damage so for that purpose it still works but yes for endurance you might have to think a bit more your typical everyday player not much has changed you can still use it just like before the sempotes is different because you probably noticed i was talking about slam radius this weapon does not have any increased slam radius but what it does have is a ranged shockwave and these shockwaves have full scaling from your mods and more importantly they don't spread as one hit it's three separate shockwaves pathing forwards with each appearance of the shockwave having their own instance of full scaling of damage which means big pp damage but also full status application there is one important thing to note those shockwaves have their own status chance value. 
and it sucks. It's extremely low, and it ignores most mechanics in their game. In fact, those slam shockwaves cannot activate Toxin Lash on Saren, but they can activate Valence Formation on Lavos, which means you can either choose to infuse Electric to easily force proc and activate Melee Influence at any given time, which is the option I chose not to do, or infuse Corrosive and Full Strip from a far range like this which leads you to spreading a lot of corrosive procs, but because it only hits once, now you are dependent on melee influence. See how one twirl gave me 14 status effects? But if I have influence active, then I can also spread stat, whoops, okay. Let me fix this, there we go. I can also spread it this way. So you'll notice that they lost all of their armor, and the thing to consider out of this is normally on the shockwaves, you cannot pronk electric that much if you haven't modded. It's like 5% status or something, and if you mod corrosive, you will not proc it that much either. Whatever you infuse on from Valence Formation is going to be the main thing that you get. So you can either opt for consistent full strip, no matter how far away the enemies are, and rely on 12 times combo to activate influence. Or you can rely on having electric proccing at all times to activate influence and depend on the few enemies you hit with the original slam because the projectile won't do it, but the original slam can proc corrosive. And then magnify your procs that way. So it's up to you to decide. I would say at base steel path, where the hammer has enough range, you would prefer to just kill from further away. And I would actually opt for infusing corrosive since you don't need the electric to kill. You just need the electric to proc. And it's reasonable enough to activate this from just being near enemies. Then you can kill anything from like 20, 30 meters away from the corrosive shockwave spam. In higher levels above base steel path, I would recommend infusing electric instead to maintain a melee influence uptime as much as possible and focus more on hitting enemies that are a bit closer to you. And instead of using the shockwaves to snipe enemies that are farther away, you're going to be using the shockwaves to magnify the damage in the immediate area to also full strip and kill them off with the inflated electric procs from melee influence. Those would be the main difference. Now, if you actually want to use this on Lavos, I would primarily recommend modding it like this. I would still go for 90% heavy efficiency because one, this weapon does so much damage on Lavos, there's literally no point in building for more damage. And you have optional Tenokai. If you bring this, you could technically drop Reflex Coil for Dispatch Overdrive for faster mobility since you're slamming all over the place anyways. However, I don't feel it's as needed. That's kind of personal preference. But not bringing melee, uh, not bringing reflex coil means that you cannot multi-slam on an acolyte. If you slam two times in a row, you'll lose a huge chunk of your combo. You could swing at them a couple of times if you so wish to activate this again and then slam. But honestly, I prefer just double stacking so you never really have to worry because you, you're never lacking in damage. This is super duper important. Because the entire reason why Sempotes works so well is the extra shockwave mechanic being able to force proc off aliens formation, which applies extra status effects and is thus reflected and magnified from melee influence, which triple dips Banes for 3.72 times more damage. So for this kind of build, it will look the exact same as what I showed you earlier, but this is the optimized version where I am, say, I infused Corrosive that time. And if I can get it, there, we have melee influence. I'm only at five times combo. If I do this, they're of course dead, right? And I can slam again and they still die because of just the melee influence chaining with proper modding. So this is why I'm saying that you can choose between infusing corrosive or electric. But what if you don't want to use Lavos? What if you don't want to use melee influence? Well, you have an option for that too, for a raw damage corrosive build. This seems very similar to my Magistar version. Now, if you're not using the melee influence setup, which takes advantage of the extra shockwaves, which is the reason why Sempotes can surpass Titron 
and Magistrar from much better hit frequency. And you ignore that all to just go for raw damage crescendo. This is where it falls behind the other two hammers. It does still work because as I mentioned before, you can still land ground finishers by using air burst like this. So that you can just go and get crescendo stacks that way. And as a result, you will eventually reach a point where you have 12 times combo at all times. And then when you do your slams, of course, it'll be inflated by self multipliers in mission if I use stealth, but you can't get those in the simulac room. So I can just go like this and you'll get decent damage killing stuff off like that. I would strongly, strongly recommend bringing buffs if you want to do this because unlike the magistrar in Karno, you will notice when i compare these two weapons you get extra hits but you have lower crit chance so it's harder to get that there and as a result from lower slam radius too then you also kill at less enemies per slam it still works but it would not be my first choice for recommending a raw damage slam hammer Titron and Magister are a lot more indifferent to that. Now, some might also be thinking of Jat Katag. The thing with Jat Katag is uh, this is only able to hit in a bigger slam radius because of melee influence, so it has no innate properties that allows it to do so, because while Vulcan Blitz works for AoE, it doesn't work unless enemies are armor stripped, and you'll need melee influence to strip in a bigger area or actively casting armor strip abilities. So Jack Attack does not really come into the discussion if you want to know my opinion on this. Again, it's Archetitron and Magistar consistently at the top. Sempotes with an influence build is better than Titron and Magistar. Without influence is worse than Titron and Magistar and comes right below them. Um, Wolf Sledge comfortably sits below that on a throwing explosion build in about the same bucket as Jadkatag. The rest of the hammers are kind of whatever and to your own taste, but they are not that remarkable at all. I know you guys will want me to produce, um, uh, show this some of it in gameplay. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the super shitty Sempotes build that only has three mods just to show you how strong this actually is in mission and we'll go and try it out. As a reminder, please, please do use Nera mods with this. Slam builds are very, very awkward and clunky to use. So if you are not using Nera mods, then you're basically shooting yourself in the foot because you don't really use anything else when you play slam builds. Nero mods give slam damage increase and slam damage applies twice when base damage is present, meaning that if it gives plus 200% damage, it is now giving 400% instead. And say like Seismic Wave, it gives, which also gives 200, is now giving 400% base damage instead. So these are massive increases to your damage total, and I would strongly, strongly recommend doing so. If you want to take a look at what I was using again for that, please do refer to the Lavos timestamp that I have earlier in the video when I was showcasing and explaining the Valence Formation situation. So now we just have this, right? And now I can go around and look, we're already killing everything. Despite the fact that I only had three mods on the build, entirely because of how busted the Slam Shockwave perk is combined with melee influence to get better full strip and better electric procs for DPS purposes. Of course, when the Acolyte shows up, this isn't going to work as well because, well, I would never ever recommend bringing three mods to kill Acolytes. But this is the current state of uh, Sempotes and why I think it's a rather interesting choice and why I said at the start that it is both the literal best hammer that we have in the game, but also very significantly worse than Titron and Magistar, depending on how you use it. Another thing is because Sempotes is so reliant on its shockwaves to have good mechanics like you can see here in tight hallways it doesn't work as well because the shockwaves get blocked for the left and right then the consequence is that if you do not aim at your enemies like say i want to kill these and i hit into here they're not going to get hit with the shockwaves meaning i lose the multi-hit benefit that allows me to armor strip significantly better 
than Titron and Magistar, as well as spreading better electric procs, which is where it'll be worse. But then if I hit them directly like this, you'll notice even on a non-existent combo build, they still nearly die. And that's why it is so variable, and thus not my first recommendation for people asking for good hammers, but is extremely fun and when used well, does scale better than the rest. Okay, we just need the Acolyte to spawn in, which hopefully does not take too long, but this was hopefully an insightful discussion on what I think about the hammers. Another thing to consider is that Magistar has a built-in lifesteal, 5%, and because you're going to be slamming for several million damage raw, even before melee influence electric procs tick in, or even on the Corosa build, Every single slam on the Magistar heals you up to full, and thus is also a lot more chill and suitable for health tanking on base steel path builds, because if you're dealing in an 18 meter radius around you, several million damage per enemy hit, there is never really going to be an enemy that will be able to kill you off unless they outright one-shot you, which leaves you with a situation of Acolytes, but Magistar also one-shots Acolytes at base steel path, so... Honestly, that is my main recommendation. However, do recall that Magistar and Karnon does require you to run Steel Path Circuit, so while the most universally applicable hammer that has very little extra that you need to do to get the most out of it once you have it, does also have the highest entry requirement, and if you want something similar, Titron might be too more in your taste before you're able to farm for the Magistar. Shattering Impact would work on the slams. Um, the slam scaling right now is a little bit awkward. I was under the impression that it was basically pure blast damage by default, but we have to check and test. Because I know that it does not inherit the IPS split of the weapon at base properly, because say like Vulnus Prime is 45% slash, but its slam never ever procs slash. Therefore, we know that it does not retain the IPS split of it, right? Have a good one, Crispy. Thanks for being here today, as well as the 25 months quarter century again. Man, I just need this to act like this fun to see how much damage I'm gonna deal to it. Oh, there we go! Speak of the devil! It heard what I was saying. Alright, where are you? So because I don't crit, remember that you have a lower scaling multiplier. Since Acolytes have a hard damage cap on how much damage you can deal per hit, critting doubles that cap and also allows you benefit from crit damage multipliers, which is why crit hammers can also kill them off a lot more easily. I was honestly expecting to be straight up unable to kill them at all whatsoever, but we still actually managed to kill the Acolyte, which was... Uh, I guess that says a lot about how strong Sempokis can be when you actually take advantage of its strengths and aim its shockwaves towards your target that you want to get rid of. But again, Magistar, due to being able to easily mod crit and status and consistently reading, reaching into orange and crit category, orange and red crits, even on a pure Corosa build will essentially one-shot the Acolyte instantly. So hopefully I can get out of this in one piece. And I do know that there was a lot of discussion in this video and less so about showcasing builds, but I also want to point out that, hey, the title of the video is, Is Sampoltis the Better Hammer? And why Jadkate can excel in certain situations, fails in others, why does it not always feel good? Why do I consider Titron and Magistar the best hammers? Where do they differ? Where are they similar? And why is Sampoltis both better and worse than Titron and Magistar? at the same time. This is it where we'll be wrapping up. A comment and a like would go a long, long ways to helping us out and raising visibility of this video so people know much more about the slam update and how to set the hammers apart. As I always say, thank you all so much for being here today. A better or yet considered a subscribe would even help us out further because I do upload almost every single day. But that'll be it for this one. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time.